Well, we've got a special treat for you. We're going to talk today about time lapse. I like the way briefly, you say special briefly. treat. I just think it's really neat. Well, special treat is really neat. Ah, <laughs> we're not poets. So we're just going to go over real quick because we've done stuff in the past on time lapse. Mm -hmm. And this is something specific. This is monarch butterflies uh, that I have been working on. And so first off, let's talk a little bit about the equipment you might need. Of course, right. you want a, a, a decent camera. And you're going to have to have some way of triggering the camera. Right. If it's not I mean, built into the camera. Yeah, there's a classic then, intervalometers like this that you right. can get. Depending on what your particular camera, they make them for Sony's and Pentex and Cannons Nikon and, and that, Canon, yeah. whatever. Um, and we've also had on the podcast these devices. This is from Alpine Labs, which will trigger camera. There's a number of different uh, devices you can do that. There's even uh, iPhone and Android-based Right, products solutions that to, you can use to trigger your camera. Right, to allow you. So it really doesn't matter what you use. In fact, Fred, on your early 7D, you had a Polaroid battery grip. That Which had, had an intervalometer built right. in. And that's what these are called. These are intervalometers that allow you to capture yeah. frames at specific intervals. And we'll talk about that real quick. Uh, basically, you want to decide what time base you have. That's what speed you want to play that back. And in the United States... Commonly they use either 24 frames per second, which was the old motion picture speed, or video at 30 frames per second. In Europe, it's 25 frames per second. So once you determine that, let's say we pick 24 frames per second. That means for every frame that every 24 frames you shoot, you've got one second of playback screen time. So if you want a 10 second uh, clip, then that's how many frames, Fred? You do the math real quick. It's 10 times 24, which is? 10 times 24 mm -hmm. is 24 times 10. Well, 240. That's the answer I was looking for. 240 frames. 240 frames. Yeah. yeah. You didn't know there was going to be math, did you? No, nobody told math. me to study for this test. But if you don't like the math part, there are also apps for your phones that you can get out there that will go in there and say, oh, I want a 10-second or 15-second time right. lapse at 24 frames. Or if I'm going to shoot at 24 frames for this long, then this is how long my final time lapse will be. So right. go get those. And they're trying to make it a little easier because otherwise you do have to sit down and figure out how many frames yeah. to get how many seconds of but actual video. It's really helpful if you know mm -hmm. and understand that anyway. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, what I did in this particular instance is, is monarch butterflies. I, right. I find monarchs are fascinating creatures. Here's a, a little insect that actually flies over several generations between Canada and Mexico. And I don't think there's any other insect that I know, especially something as delicate as a butterfly, that uh, travels that far. Now, I know it's, it takes several generations for them to do that, but just the fact that they do it is quite amazing. And they start out as a little tiny egg, uh, which are laid on... We call them butterfly weeds or since milkweed. Are, milkweed. And so what you want to do if you want to try this is get some milkweed plants. Hopefully they'll attract the monarch butterflies. Oh, believe me, they will. Lay the eggs. And then they get these little tiny, about the size of a pinhead. And then a little caterpillar emerges, which is almost, well, it can't even be seen when they first come out. And they grow about 1,600 times till mm -hmm. they're about two inches long. And at that point, they're uh, between the they become leafy. Hatch. They're yeah. just yeah, they're just eating machines. All they do is eat. What's a really good project for some of you who want to see, capture what it does? And I've had a chance to kind of watch for lengthy times doing uh, macro. Is that they actually eat down one side and up the other until mm -hmm. they get to the very middle rib, and then they re reach up to the top where it attaches the plant and chew that off and prune the plant. So they basically make sure that that milkweed, even though they may strip it of leaves, is going to grow back with no problems. They don't leave anything to die. So they're, they're nature's pruning device. And that kind of knowledge is what makes a good wildlife photographer because you want to know your subject. You want to understand because right. by knowing that, then you're able to capture that. Right. Uh, you could do a time lapse on that, I'm just, just eating, the leaf. The, uh, eating the leaf, and it's really cool. Or what Jim did... Uh, when they go into their chrysalis? Right. Well, once they get about two inches, what I did is I move them to a little terrarium with the sticks, and I bring in some leaves. At one point, 
hopefully within a day or two. And it takes about 10 to 12 days from the time they hatch to the time they get that two inch right, stage. Right. So if you catch them at about that period of time or about 10 days old, hopefully you won't be having to feed them leaves for too long. They will eventually stop. They'll try to move around. Uh, you want to make sure that you isolate so they can't get away because they will. And they'll eventually stop and they'll roost underneath the stick or whatever you happen to have uh, in your terrarium. Could be the lid of the terrarium. And then they'll hang upside down. They attach themselves by a silk and it'll hang upside down into a J formation. We'll have all these in the uh, time lapse. You're going to see this. And in about 12 hours from that point, they'll slowly eventually straighten out. And you can tell when the next stage is getting close because the little antenna kind of go limp and loose. And they start to straighten out. And at that point, then they burst through the skin and revealing the chrysalis or the pupa underneath. The skin falls away and they wiggle around it make sure they're firmly attached to this whatever, whatever twig, they're attached to right? whatever they were on and then they kind of go dormant now that is a beautiful it looks like a little emerald with gold specks on it they will hang there for about um i think 10 days to two weeks it depends on the temperature of the weather uh, at that point, then, it slowly they turn dark, and you can see the wings of the butterfly through the, the chrysalis. When you see that, it's getting close. That's when you want to start the next part of the time lapse. And some of this is luck. I had to do it several times before I got the sequences that you're going to see here, that the butterfly then bursts out of the chrysalis. This is not a cocoon. Do you know what the difference is between a chrysalis and a cocoon, Fred? Yeah, but the chrysalis is is more organic, more organic from the actual uh, right. butterfly. Or excuse me, the, the caterpillar. Yeah. Whereas a cocoon is sometimes gathered material. It may look fuzzy, woolly, or, or it could be silk. It could be a silk. To, yeah. Uh, so it's no, there they actually weave it. Where in this case, like he says, the skin comes off. Yeah, the skin comes off, and, and it's, it's it kind of. In fact, it looks kind of magical a, because right. it looks like the pupa underneath, when the skin comes off, was larger than the. Right, <laughs> but going itself. into that pupate stage is is kind of cool. But anyway, monarchs are particularly attractive and beautiful mm -hmm. looking. So let's let's look at your well, segments. The final we'll step is so it. that butterfly right. hangs upside down. If you do this, make sure that you leave the butterfly and let him hang upside down and let those wings dry. Because if they don't, they'll never form properly and will never be able to fly away. So, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, run these. And then, again, if you have questions, you're more than welcome yeah. to contact us, and we'll be happy to answer the questions. So let's yeah, go ahead let's, let's and check it out. sequence.
okay, here's my setup for the little monarchs. I wait till they're about two inches long. This little guy actually left the plants so that he was feeding on and uh, managed to capture him, put him in this little plastic terrarium. And the reason that I have this uh, dish down here with water is to form kind of a moat. They won't go into the water. These little guys can move fast and they also move considerable distances at some times uh, away from the initial plants that are feeding. Now, if you happen to pull them from the plants when they get about this size while they're still feeding, you can take and clip some leaves off of the um, butterfly weed and put them in here and uh, they will continue to eat. At some point, they're gonna stop and that's when they're gonna start looking for a place to uh, form their pupa. And that's what this little guy is getting ready to do now. They'll eventually take and they'll hang themselves upside down. And uh, at that point, what I will do is I will move them to the studio with the lights, the tripod, and my time-lapse gear in order to capture the formation of the, the chrysalis. And then eventually when they emerge as a butterfly. So anyway, this is my setup. I just wanted you to see that. My little buddy here, he finally stopped moving. As you can see, he's underneath the uh, branch in here. They rarely go for more than a, a few hours after they stop eating. And I had to follow him around because he kept wanting to climb up the sides of the little terrarium. So I kept moving him back to the branch and eventually he gave up and he's in here and eventually he will attach himself. He will hang upside down here and begin to go into pupa. Now this is the setup I've got. I've got a white wall in here. I'm using uh, CFL bulbs in these. You can use uh, uh, LED lights. Nice thing is, is these are daylight balanced and uh, they don't put out any heat or very, very little heat so they're not going to bother him. And they last a long time. Very inexpensive to operate and uh, they're consistent so I'm going to get good results with my time lapse. Okay, once you've captured all that great footage, what do you do with it? You're going to have all these individual uh, still frames, uh, hundreds of them probably. Well, what I use is LR time lapse and I highly recommend it. I'm going to put a link down here. Recommend you go out and you get a 30 day free trial on it. And it is by far the best program. There are other ways that you can convert your stills into a video sequence, but you really, really need to check out LR Time Lapse because I don't think there's anything better than that. And uh, it does work in conjunction with Lightroom, so you will need Lightroom. But please go out there and check that out. I want to mention something that's frustrating or frustration that I've had with the uh, the Monarchs, and that's uh, I'm going to show this right here, and we'll put a little close up there, but you can see the pupa, uh, and it's unfortunately deceased it's died I've had three of these uh, happen to me we had it all set up did the time lapse it went through the J and then the pupa dies and I just don't want you to be frustrated because this can happen in this case it's a tamarin fly that gets into the caterpillar basically a parasitic yeah, it's a parasitic and they're also there as Fred had mentioned earlier some parasitic wasps depending on where you live um, there's other pests, there's some viruses and bacteria that can go in there, but uh, here in Florida, this fly, and I, in many, many other areas, is probably the number one killer. Of uh, monarchs. The monarchs. Well, yeah. it can do other caterpillars as well, but it particularly enjoys right. monarchs. And what happens is it lays its eggs on the back of a caterpillar, and um, depending on the age of the particular caterpillar, it's possible the caterpillar can die before it reaches a stage where it's going to pupate or in my case in three instances in fact the uh, maggots came out after it uh, pupated and it kills the pupa and you can tell and we'll show a, a close-up here the little string that hangs out where the the fly emerged so I just wanted you to be aware of that and basically the only thing you can do is capture the caterpillars before they are uh, when they're actually quite small and try the to smaller the better bring them indoors uh, away from the flies or the flies can't heavily get monitor to them. the area where they are 
habitating, and you might actually get some uh, some some footage. Yeah, it might be interesting to get the parasitic the, wasps or parasitic flies actually attacking. Yeah. But if you want the caterpillar coming out, which yeah. I assume is what you want, then you have to get it beforehand. Right. And maybe you'll get lucky. I've I've had several that have emerged, obviously. But I think probably about 80% of the caterpillars we had around here were killed by these flies. Also, when, so, you, th when you think about it, Jim, we had an explosion in population because the weather, the well, climate yes. has been really strange. And I think nature does its best to check and balance. And I think then the fly and parasitic wasp population exploded also because it had more possibilities for re reproduction. Yeah, that's, uh, I wouldn't debate that. But I do know that from the research that I've done, they said this has been a problem uh, in years where the caterpillars weren't as plentiful that the sure. flies can There's always going to be also. some of them, yeah. Definitely. Anyway, just wanted you to be aware of that and uh, maybe eliminate the frustration of going through all that time lapse and then losing it because stupid little fly. <laughs> Hey, thanks for tuning in to the new YouTube Photobug channel. And we hope that you're going to subscribe. So click on the subscribe button down here. That's right. And if you want to be notified ahead of time when we have a new feature coming up, click on the bell. And finally, while you're at it, how about giving us a thumbs up?